If there's one thing that drives me insane, it's wasting energy. This past winter, every time I walked by my front door, I could feel a draft. Every time I felt that draft, I felt a lot of pain in my back pocket. I mean, it's basically the equivalency of throwing money out the window, especially if you're the one paying for the heating bills. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to replace the weather stripping or weather seal on your front door. Now, this is gonna be my second attempt at making this video. I started to make the initial video and if there's one thing I've learned in replacing weather stripping on front doors, use what the door originally had on it. Try and stay away from aftermarket products that don't seem to match what was already on your door. Now, how do you match what's on your door? Well, if you look up weather stripping online, maybe you'll, you'll get lucky right away and you'll be able to find a match. But one of the best things you can do is identify the manufacturer and model of your door. Now, from my research on most front doors, there are some numbers in the panes of glass on the front door where perhaps you could find a manufacturer's name, a model number. You can also check the hinges of your door. That may give you some hints and clues as to who made the door. My house was built in 1993, and this front door is definitely original to the house. And there were no signs of the manufacturer or model of the door anywhere. So I was pretty much on my own. I went to lumber yards. This is basically what I was trying to match. I went to lumber yards, I went to a couple door specialists, and nobody was able to find what I was looking for. So after many hours of online research, I found pretty much an exact match to the weather strip on my door. And I found it from this little website called All About Doors and Windows. I definitely have to give them a shout out here, and they're from Kansas City, Montana. It cost me $50 for three pieces, which will, you know, do my front door. And uh, I'll talk about the weather stripping real quick. The style of weather stripping I have is called a hinge and bowl weather strip. I'll show you a picture of what the diagram looks like. So it's nice on their website, they give you an exact diagram of what it looks like and some measurements. So I was able to take the sample piece that I took off my front door and I was able to measure this and it's pretty much an exact match. The only thing that's slightly different is the hinge part on my door is a little bit shorter than the one they gave me. So. Fingers crossed that this will work, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Also, another thing to note upon is all three lengths are the same, so we're going to have to cut the top piece of weather strip to size. But that extra piece that we cut off, don't throw that away, save that. Because according to this website, if you ever damage your weather stripping in the future, you can take that extra piece, you can cut out the damaged section of weather stripping on the door, and you can just splice a new piece back in. So, let's get started. So how does this weather stripping stay in place? Well, behind this weather stripping, there's actually a little kerf, a little cutout, and there are actually barbs on the weather stripping, and those barbs slide into the kerf, and that locks the weather stripping in place. So to remove the old weather stripping, I'm gonna start at the bottom of the door, and I'm just gonna start pulling this weather stripping out of that kerf. You can see that little kerf back there, little alcove. And we're just going to pull this weather stripping out of here. Here we'll take a quick look at the old weather stripping versus the new weather stripping. On the old weather stripping below, you can see that the bulb is just shot. You know, after 27 years of opening and closing the door, I think it's uh, it served its time. Time to retire. As you can see, the new stuff is pretty much an exact match. Fingers crossed that this will go right in here and we won't have any more problems. So a question you may have when installing the new weather stripping, do you start with the top or do you start with the sides? And I'd recommend that you start with the top. If I take the camera up here and I give you a closer look at the kerf, you can see that there's a bit of a header when it comes to the kerf up here. So I recommend installing the top piece and then we'll do the side pieces. Now again, remember you're gonna have to cut the top piece to size. So start on one side and make sure it's tucked in well and then just have a scissor handy and we'll cut it to size. Next, it's up to you if you want to start at the top or the bottom. I'm going to start off at the top and make sure this is pushed up against that other piece as much as possible. Looks 
like we may have to trim a little bit off the bottom here. That's about perfect. And the final thing to do here is to replace the other vertical strip of weather stripping on the other side of the door frame. Again, starting at the top. One thing left to do now, and that's give this door a test. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous because the aftermarket weather stripping that I put in here last time, two previous attempts, the door would not close because that stuff was just so thick. So, fingers crossed. Huh. And I think we're gonna make out all right here. Really smooth. I'm not seeing any light along the jams. Let's go take a look from the outside. Looks like it seals up really well right there. It gets pinched a little bit, which that's fine. Quarter inch bulb seals up well on the left side of the door. Also seals up pretty well on top. There may be a little bit of a space, but where I see a little bit of an issue is down here at the lower right end of the door. You see how there's like a little gap, maybe like an eighth inch gap. I mean, I can pull the door forward a little bit, and this is me putting a decent amount of pressure on the door, pulling forward, and I can close some of that up. And you know how I could attempt to correct that is to try adjusting this striker plate and moving that forward, but at this point in time, I really don't want to mess with it. I, I honestly think what's happened is, unfortunately, you know, it, it's an old door. It's 27 years old. I think it's warped a little bit in which that it makes, you know, more contact at the upper end of the frame up there and then it's, you know, twisted out a little bit at the bottom right there. So I think I'm just going to live with that. You know, wait till the winter time comes around and uh, if there's any issues, I could always try adjusting that strike plate. But as of right now, I think this is pretty good. Also, another thing that I'm noticing down here is there's actually another piece of weather strip down here that is shot. So that's going to have to be something that I replace in the future. But anyway, you know, I would say it's 85 to 90% better than that of which of what it was. So that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.